I'm Mary Philando, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and clinical lipid specialist, and welcome to my kitchen. Um, I am going to be preparing three recipes for you today, one considered a breakfast, one considered a lunch, and one for dinner. They will all be FCS compliant with uh, FCS friendly foods, which include pretty much no added fat, 10 to 15% of calories from fat. I think most of um, my FCS people probably stay under about five grams of fat per meal. Also, to make it a little bit more challenging, they um, minimize intake of refined grains. So you're looking at whole grains, um, fruits, vegetables, and things like that. And then the last um, part of the meal preparation is that things would contain no added sugars. So pretty tough road to go, but we do have new labels that clearly delineate how many grams of added sugars are in products. So that's good because it's also opened up the door for lots of new products coming on the market that don't have added sugars because now everybody's looking at that and seeing what was in uh, certain things. Anyway, um, I used to do cooking classes at Cedar sinai Medical Center in cardiac rehab in the 90s, so it was a pretty fat-free time uh, with Dean Ornish and those uh, eating styles. So I'm pretty well versed in uh, altering recipes to make them still tasty, but without added fat. And I think a lot of chefs, if you're allowed to use butter and oils, and of course things should taste good, but this is just a little bit more fun because it's a little bit more challenging to find something that you would want to put on your menu. So that's what I'm hoping today is that you'll find things that whether you have FCS or not I know um, some of the FCS patients are tuning in today so welcome to them and all the NLA people I uh, do, do want to say that this is a very low budget it's me taping myself on my phone so we'll see how that goes and um, I'll start the first recipe so we're gonna do a peach smoothie with chia so one of the things that um, with a very low fat eating plan, um, you really should be considering a source of essential fatty acids. Your body doesn't make them. And one of the best places to get an important essential fatty acid, alpha linolenic acid, is with chia seeds. So we're gonna make a peach smoothie with chia seeds. And you can also use this for your um, breakfast, but you could also use it for dessert or snacks. So we'll start with a cup of no added sugar frozen fruit. So I'm doing peaches, but you can do pretty much whatever you like, whether it's blueberries. And it's nice to have frozen fruit because if you're in the pandemic and not shopping as much as you used to, fruits are one of the first things to go. But if you have things in your freezer, then whoop, that's good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, then let's see. We are going to add a half a cup of skim milk. And I, I don't know if you've noticed, but the milks today are lasting well into like the next few months. This one I think is all the way till January. So it really does cut down on waste because they are now ultra pasteurized and that reduces the bacteria. So they last a lot longer, but once you open it, you would, um, use it for seven to 10 days. So we'll put in a half a cup of skim milk and we're also gonna do a half a cup of um, non-fat Greek yogurt. Um, non-fat Greek yogurt has a little bit more protein than other yogurts. Let me go get my spatula, here we go. And if I could think of one thing to keep in my pantry or refrigerator all the time, it would be this Faye yogurt. It is fabulous. Um, it, every every non-fat Greek yogurt's great, but you can use it for dips, you can use it for a meal, you can use it to replace oil in a loaf cake recipe. So it's a, a really good deal to uh, have something so versatile. You could use it instead of mayonnaise in a, um, mayonnaise type salad. 
So let's see. And then I'm gonna do the chia seeds. And chia seeds are kind of fun. They're a kind of a new um, superfood, although they were introduced in the 80s with the chia pets, if anybody remembers that. But these chia seeds, a serving is three tablespoons, and that's 11 grams of total fat. So we know that's way too much. But if we just use a teaspoon, it gives a nice texture to the smoothie. And one teaspoon has about 1.1 to 1.4 grams of total fat, but you're also getting somewhere between six and 850 milligrams of alpha linolenic acid. And the, um, the adequate intake that is recommended is 1.1 grams for women and 1.6 grams for men. So this just gives us a little bit of that um, what her body can't make. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract in to give it a little sweetness. Talk to um, your healthcare professional or the FCS patients that might be listening because um, some people are, are would even go and get alcohol-free vanilla extract because the alcohol is not uh, recommended for people with FCS. Now I'm gonna use two packets of this uh, Stevia Splenda, but you may not need to put anything in. I like everything sweet, so we'll just blend this up. And what's good about the chia seeds is that they have a very delicate outside. They're um, related to a flowering plant from the mint family. And they absorb 10 times their weight in water. So they help to thicken things. You can throw it in so many things. I think I got it pretty good there. Let's see. And then that's about it. So we'll pour it out. You can freeze the leftovers too. This really made one serving for a breakfast or a couple servings for a um, dessert, but cheers. <laughs> I guess for some people is, it is um, about that time, quitting time for the day. Uh, so yeah, tastes good. So that is your peach smoothie with chia seeds. Thanks. And now we're on to the next recipe, and that is a tuna pasta uncasserole. I grew up in a big family in Baltimore, and every Friday night, my mother figured out some way to make tuna. And thinking about the pandemic, and having things on hand and things that you can store easily in your refrigerator or cabinets, nothing is better than this meal for that because you can always have everything on hand because it's basically a bunch of canned things and some pasta so and, and some frozen peas. So let's look so first of all we're just gonna put everything into this baking dish so i will be microwaving it because i'm into a faster uh time in the kitchen but you can also bake it as well so we will use tuna solid white tuna in water so you know that has almost no fat whatsoever however if you're pregnant or lactating or children um, may want to uh, talk to their physician about how much tuna can be had in a week due to mercury. We are going to add some, let's see, cream of mushroom soup, but we're using the Healthy Request mushroom soup and um, it adds a little bit of fat, 2.5 grams per serving and but for the whole thing with no other added fat each serving contains three grams of total fat so we will put that whole pan in here and 
Guess you could really make your own cream somehow with flour and skim milk, but it, it, this is so good and, uh, and so fast. So the next thing, we'll use a half a cup of non-fat milk, which I need to run and get. So I will put in the frozen peas now that were just peas from uh, any peas, but without added fat. And then we're gonna use a half a cup of non-fat milk and a small container of these diced pimentos. I think, oh, there we go. Uh, I usually use a small container, but I can only find big ones. So I'll just use half of that and that gives it a nice red color. I am going to use a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And here we go. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And some black pepper. Now, Sometimes people like it to have a little bit of a buttery taste, and for that, I use the Molly McButter, but it's really not necessary, but you could use the Molly McButter. And we'll put in some mushrooms, and I usually use the eight ounce can, but I got this one, which is six ounces drained weight, but that's gonna be plenty. And lastly, we have the pasta. Now, the way I do it is I think ahead to when I'm gonna make this meal, and maybe a day or two before, I'll make pasta and then have leftovers, because this uses about two cups. You could use four cups if you were trying to uh, feed a bigger crowd and you wanted to have a good cup of pasta with about three ounces of tuna. So, but I'm gonna use, um, a little bit more than two cups for this one. And I am using a whole wheat fusilli pasta, but I wanted to let you know that there are so many pastas on the market right now that are so good for people with FCS. This one contains whole grain organic white winter wheat flour. So the white winter wheat is a nice um, choice because it has a milder taste and it does not have that darker brown color. So you're just, you know, for someone that's looking, oh, this is too, you know, whole grainy, then this is a great choice. Other choices, um, there are lots of pastas that are made with, with different flowers of beans. So this is a black bean flour, you could get garbanzo bean flour, you could get pea flour, lentil flour, and they're all delicious as well. Um, another choice could be a whole wheat couscous. And this is a very mild product that because of so much surface area, it quickly uh, absorbs water and is done within five minutes. You don't even cook it, you just put it in hot water. So those are all choices. Um, but uh, I really love the white winter wheat. And I like the fusilli for this too, although you can use penne and different things. But the fusilli is good because it, um, it has more places where the mushroom soup and everything can stick. So we're just going to stir that up. You're going to see this is pretty much done in like less than 10 minutes the way I do things. And again, it's something that you go, what are we having for dinner? I have nothing. I didn't go to the store. I didn't get ground turkey breast. I don't have many fresh vegetables. I almost have nothing. And you look in the back of your pantry and you have tuna, you have mushrooms, you have pimentos, and you have the cream of mushroom soup, healthy request style, then you've got it made. And you can see, this is kind of a feel good comfort food too because of the creaminess, but I'm not sure if you can see it. I will put it in the microwave later, but it, um, yeah, it tastes good and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, I didn't put any pepper in, I don't think. So let me do that. And yeah, we're done. 
So that is the tuna pasta on casserole. Maybe if you want to, you could put it in the oven. You could even sprinkle it with some whole wheat panko breadcrumbs to give it a, a crispy top. Um, what else could you do? Maybe some flax meal you could sprinkle with, but that would add a little bit more fat. So remember, this is three grams of fat per serving, and this recipe makes four servings. So enjoy. Okay, so now we're ready for the dinner meal. And this is a special occasion uh, kind of a meal and very typical in Maryland that people would eat crab cakes because of course we have the Chesapeake Bay where we get a lot of crabs. So um, we're also using some Old Bay seasoning, which is a Baltimore spice and now owned by McCormick Spice Company, which is in Maryland. So that will give a lot of flavor. And let's see, uh, we'll start with the crab meat. It's expensive, um, but you can get it on special, often at the big box stores like Costco and Sam's Club. You can also find it on special at home um, Whole Foods. And lastly, you can half the recipe and really find often the smaller eight ounce containers. This is a pound of um, blue crab and in three ounces cooked blue crab meat, there's only one gram of fat. So that's why it's so good um, for an FCS special dinner. So we're gonna put the crab meat into the bowl and you see we have this is a combination of different parts of the crab. So you even have some leg meat, which is very flavorful. You have the back fin part, which is a delicacy. And uh, wow, you can just, it smells so great. So it smells like home. Anyway, so that's, so we're gonna be making, I should have said, we're gonna be making crab cakes. And they are Maryland crab cakes. And the recipe comes from Phillips Crab House, but redone my style to be as fat free as possible. So the next thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of whole wheat bread in it. So I'm gonna process these pieces of bread just so I can get some bread crumbs. Some people just pull it apart when they make their crab. I'm gonna process it a little bit more and my bread was bigger than my average bread. So let's see. Sorry, that's kind of off camera a little bit, but you can see that I have just a little food processor and it makes it pretty easy. Pull that out. So here are the breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna pour those in. And then we're gonna use two tablespoons of fat-free mayonnaise. And I think there's only one company still making fat-free mayonnaise. Again, if somebody was using mayonnaise but needed an alternative and could not find this, which I did find in several stores recently, um, they could use the um, Greek yogurt, the non-fat Greek yogurt. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of the fat-free mayonnaise and two egg whites. Now, uh, I'm gonna use egg beaters rather than separate the eggs or egg substitute, so fat-free egg substitute. And each egg is about three tablespoons, which is a little less than a half a cup for two, six tablespoons. So I'm gonna put that in, that will hold it together really nice and Usually the egg substitutes are really 99% egg whites with a little bit of uh, beta carotene for color to make it look yellow and some less of then uh, as an emulsifier. And I'm gonna put two teaspoons of my Old Bay in. I think you all will be getting these recipes, but let's see. I also use this for, um, for shrimp too when I make any kind of steamed shrimp. This just, you know, really gives it a good, a good flavor. 
And I also use it for my Maryland crab soup because anything that has obey in it, even if it didn't even have crabs in it, kind of tastes, there we go, that's about right. Tastes like crab. And two teaspoons of dried parsley. So again, I hate when you have to go out and get things just for a recipe, but these kind of things, you, you know, most people, if they make these, would already have them in your pantry. A half a teaspoon of yellow mustard, which is kind of not worth measuring, but let's see what we can do. I'm gonna just stick it in here and put a half a teaspoon of mustard. I'm gonna give it a tiny bit more. Ugh. There we go, that's the mustard. And a fourth of a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I do have to get out of my refrigerator. A fourth of a teaspoon, so that's almost not worth measuring either. A fourth of a teaspoon, sorry. I'm gonna go off camera. Remember how we're doing this very low budget, me taping myself on my phone. And we're gonna stir that up. You can see that bread and the egg will kind of hold everything together. Oops. I realized from that first one, I kind of looked like Julia Child when I was doing that blender. <laughs> but I'll try to stay neat. Now, I will need to make these into patties, so I will be using my hands, but I have been washing my hands a lot, and unfortunately, you're not here for dinner. Otherwise, I would get out some gloves and use them. Let me look through all my ingredients again. Crab, whole wheat bread, fat-free mayonnaise, egg whites or egg substitute, Old Bay, parsley, mustard, Worcestershire, and then what I'm gonna do that's a little bit different today is I'm using a tablespoon of um, MCT oil. And in the lecture, we kind of talked about how we purchase it and it's better to purchase it through a pharmaceutical company like Nestle Nutrition that, you know, is, is more regulated than something you would get off of the internet, but I did get this off of the internet because the other one was just, you know, six bottles for $3.99 was a little too much. So this one said that it contains only capric and caprylic acid, which are the two medium chain triglycerides. So I am gonna do it just in that tablespoon. When you are using MCT oil, remember to start slowly um, and sometimes it could cause abdominal pain if you're using too much of it. And the other key, which I see I'm not following, is to put your temperature between low and medium. So sometimes it's gonna take a little bit more time to really make these crab cakes brown in the MCT oil, but the MCT oil will give it a lot of nice flavor. So I think we've got this pretty well stirred up. And buying crab cakes in a restaurant, of course they would put so much more breading and uh, less crab. So these are really gonna be good because they're made by you. They pretty much have uh, about a gram of fat. And you can get six patties out of it. There we go, I'm gonna put that on there. Six patties, or you could do four big ones, depending how you want. You could even do it as crab balls and just bake it in the oven and make it as an appetizer. So that would be a very special appetizer. So I'm just gonna do about three of them so we can get these cooking a little bit better. And so I don't wanna run out of time. So let's see. So you can see, that's a pretty good sized crab cake, but actually, yeah, I would at least get six out of this uh, batter. And if you were in Maryland, you would probably just eat these 
with uh, crackers and maybe some coleslaw or some corn or something. Here you can have them all year round because the crab meat is available in the can all year. I will probably have it with the light rye wasa cracker because it is pretty much one of the only crackers that's whole grain and contains no added fat. So, and they're so tasty. So I will be doing that. So let's see what we've got going here. I don't know if you can see these. MCT oil is really fun to use if you haven't used it if you have FCS. If you don't, and you feel like you just wanna use a little olive oil or canola oil or something, that's perfectly fine um, also. And you can see that tablespoon, even if I had six in here, is really plenty. Um, and it, it has 115 calories per tablespoon. So for those of you who are trying to gain weight, um, it, it's great because it gives you a little extra calories. I know some of my SCS patients have trouble keeping their weight on because the eating style is, is more limited. Um, let's see, I'm gonna turn that over. Okay, we've got a little brownness going here on these crab cakes. I think Philip's Crab House would be very happy with these. Um, they are not brown enough yet, but they're almost there. Of course, you would really want to cook them for a good, I'd say, five to 10 minutes on each side just to, to cook through thoroughly, although the crab is already cooked. And that's it for the crab cake. So. Have it with some coleslaw that you make with fat-free mayo or with uh, non-fat Greek yogurt and your crackers, whole grain, no added fat, um, or have it as an appetizer. So I hope you enjoyed these cooking ideas and hope that you'll have some fun with cooking at home because I know we have lots of time for it lately because we're all spending a lot more time at home and a lot less time in the restaurant and on the road. Maybe you're working from home even. So um, thank you for having me and thank you for coming into my kitchen.